United States history is a story that powerful people have kept secret. They want to hide how much the slave industry affected their country's success and the enormous wealth it values. While praising figures like Lincoln and Jefferson, who pretended to be kind but secretly manipulated things, there's a dark secret they don't want to talk about. Slavery, their most profitable business, thrived. Terrible things happened, with young girls forced to have babies until they couldn't anymore, and then their babies were taken away and sold to the highest bidder. These awful acts against people were not only in the United States, but the United States became really good at oppressing people systematically. But before we talk about that, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It was the birth of a thriving empire, where those who fueled its growth stood on the backs of slaves. While many believe that Congress's decision to end the international slave trade in 1808 birthed slave farms, the truth unravels a far more sinister tale. It was a meticulously orchestrated scheme led by cunning minds like Thomas Jefferson, president of the time, who understood the true value of slave labor. In his eyes, slaves were mere pawns, a means to inflate the price of domestically bred slaves as the external supply dwindled. As tobacco exports declined and cotton plantations soared, demanding a relentless workforce, the paradigm shifted. Landowners, predominantly in Virginia and Maryland, engaged in the tobacco trade and found themselves with surplus slaves. Seizing the opportunity, they sold off young boys aged between 8 and 10, already burdened with daily toil, to states where their labor commanded exorbitant prices. The slave farming revolution commenced, fueled by calculated moves, manipulating the market and transforming the very essence of American prosperity. Behind the facade of profitable enterprises, the breeding of slaves hit a chilling reality. Multiple births, draining resources and medical attention, made it an impractical primary venture. The true profits of slave farms remained elusive for years, sustained by the unwavering toil of women on the plantations. Even amidst pregnancy, they dutifully shouldered their daily burdens ensuring the wheels of commerce kept turning. Homegrown slaves became prized assets, their value skyrocketing. North American citizens eagerly embraced them as currency, using them to acquire goods and settle debts. Cunning landowners orchestrated forced marriages, handpicking the tallest, strongest, and most resilient men, hoping their offspring would be the epitome of perfection. Yet if the plan faltered, the sinister truth behind the breeding mills emerges, where the lives of enslaved women were exploited, their bodies reduced to commodities, and hope turned to despair. Within the twisted realm of slavery, slave owners reveled in a despicable choice, using their own slaves for personal gain, spawning children destined for a life in chains. A white man's reckless indulgence held no consequences, only twisted wealth accumulation. A chilling market emerged, catering to those seeking slaves of lighter complexion deemed special servants or bad fellows. In a cruel irony, some slave owners believed their excessive favors bestowed upon women of color were acts of benevolence, rescuing them from the perceived brutality of their fellow black slaves. In 1819, Thomas Jefferson penned a telling letter, emphasizing the paramount importance of increasing their slave numbers, exposing his understanding of slaves as valuable capital. His chilling words echoed, if not their labor but their increase, that is the first consideration for us. Such perverse beliefs drove the relentless pursuit of profit. Slave women became vessels subjected to the demands of breeders seeking multiple births to maximize gains. Fertility soared as the business required, prompting slave women to receive some of its first instances of free medical care in the country. The commodification of their bodies knew no bounds. By 1860, the haunting truth unfolded. Female slaves in Virginia outnumbered their male counterparts by a staggering 300,000. An economy built on the exploitation of lives stood as a haunting testament to humanity's darkest depths. In 1792, Eli Whitney embarked on a transformative journey from Massachusetts to Georgia, igniting a revolution on Catherine Green's cotton plantation. As a private tutor, he witnessed the crippling struggle faced by cotton growers, the laborious task of hand-picking. Determined to engineer a solution, Whitney set to work on a game-changing creation, the cotton gin. His ingenious device, adorned with rotating brushes and teeth, swiftly liberated the cotton fibers from their stubborn seeds. The impact was staggering. Cotton production underwent a seismic shift. Plantations multiplied as the textile industry clamored for the bountiful harvests. A mere pair of slaves could yield a staggering 50 pounds of cotton fiber in just 10 hours, thanks to this revolutionary machine. As the pace quickened and cost plummeted, the demand for cotton-infused garments soared. A frenzy of supply and demand ensued, reshaping the fabric of commerce. 
Concurrently, the Atlantic slave trade met its end, while the Deep South witnessed an explosion in sugarcane and rice production. The cascading efforts were undeniable. A voracious hunger for slave labor emerged to sustain the monumental output. In a mere blink of an eye, the slave labor force swelled from 700,000 to a staggering 3 million. The consequences were dire. Exploitation and mistreatment reached unimaginable heights. The cotton empire flourished, yet its foundation was drenched in the blood, sweat, and tears of those trapped within its relentless grip. The horrors inflicted upon enslaved men and women by greedy slaveholders and heartless overseers were enough to sicken the soul, even claiming lives. A cruel cycle was perpetuated, ensuring the constant need for fresh workers on plantations. Crafted laws, championed by the very owners, regulated and traded human lives, treating them as mere cattle. The U.S. Supreme Court's chilling Dred Scott decision echoed the sentiment, a stark declaration that no rights were owed to those enslaved benefiting the burgeoning slave farms of the Upper South. In Richmond, Virginia, and Maryland's eastern shore, sprawling slave farms rose, and their profitability hinged on the fertility of enslaved women. They were reduced to labels that dehumanized them, branded as breeders, women whose worth were measured solely by their ability to bear children. Heartbreaking stories of enslaved families torn apart at the whims of overseers, based on physical appearances, echoed through the testimonies of those who escaped the clutches of their oppressors. Former slave Maggie Steinhaus shared haunting memories of how dark-skinned men, selected for their physical traits, were rented by slaveholders and placed in rooms with young women, destined to breed slaves. Historian Edward Franklin Fraser revealed the truth in his book, The Negro Family, illustrating the owner's relentless pursuit of human chattel. They viewed their enslaved workers as nothing more than breeding stock, driven to produce an army of laborers, eagerly sold to cotton plantations in Mississippi and Alabama's Black Belt. Slave trading companies like Franklin and Armfield thrived, with Louisiana, Kentucky, and New Orleans emerging as vital slave markets. The latter city, fueled by its nefarious trade, surged to become the fourth largest and richest in the nation by 1840. Its wealth is stained by the blood and misery of those bought and sold. In the heart of darkness where humanity was lost, slave owners reveled in their sadistic reign. No mercy was shown, no matter the age or gender. You were no more than chattel, an object in a white supremacist society. Whips cracked, leaving agonizing scars upon the backs of the enslaved. Lives were extinguished without remorse, for the slave farms were no different from their conventional counterparts. Even women and pregnant teenagers were not spared from the vicious lashes. Ingenious methods were devised to inflict punishment without harming the unborn child. A pit was dug where a tormented woman would lie, exposing her vulnerable belly to receive the wrath of her master. The range of torments inflicted knew no bounds. Beatings, shackles, burns, imprisonment, branding, hangings, and unimaginable tortures conceived by their twisted minds. These punishments were doled out for various reasons. Working too slowly, daring to venture beyond the confines of the plantation, showing the slightest hint of insubordination, or simply to assert the owner's dominance and masculinity. Such horrors were enacted before the eyes of other slaves, a harrowing spectacle intended as a warning. When offenses were deemed severe, a ghastly variation of the traditional whipping was employed. The enslaved were suspended by their thumbs, each strike of the whip tearing into their flesh repeatedly. Witnessing such atrocities was an eyewitness named Hardy, who shared a tale of an attempted rebellion swiftly crushed. The punishments that followed were beyond brutal. They were a culmination of unimaginable cruelty. The enslaved rebel was hung, whipped, and cut with knives until life finally relinquished its grip. In the belly of the beast, male slaves endured a distinct form of torment, marked by specialized punishments and disparate treatment. A report from the Virginia Committee of the Privy Council in 1789 shed light on this divide, revealing how men were often bound in chains while their female counterparts remained unshackled. It was as if men were deemed less threatening, relegated to a position of diminished importance. One of the most haunting methods of punishment was the merciless collar, a thick, oppressive metal contraption adorned with cruel spikes that deprived those already exhausted souls of any respite. Daily tasks became insurmountable challenges, their burden magnified by the weight upon their necks. Louis Kane, a survivor of slavery, recounted the harrowing tale of a comrade enduring a year in such a collar, a punishment for daring to seek freedom. Escape was treacherous, pursued relentlessly by owners with boundless resources. The slaves bore scars of dog bites and shotgun wounds, their bodies marked like chattel. Branded with searing irons, they were reduced to mere property. Teeth were extracted and pain endured, 
all for the easy identification if they dared to flee. The stories of enslaved souls worldwide are heart-wrenching. They suffered for years, their toil laying the foundation of empires. Today, while slavery takes different forms, racism persists, poisoning our shared humanity. It's time to confront this evil together. With that said, thank you for watching. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and stay tuned for more. See you in the next video. Till then, take care.